Hi all. Well, thanks to everyone who's been bugging me to start uploading again. Now that and a combination of the fact that it's absolutely freezing out here right now. I've actually taken the time to get on top of the editing. So has it been, what, six months or so since the last video? I figure we better start off with a recap. So for those of you who are not familiar with the build, this is my 1972 Vauxhall Forenza. I've owned the car since 2010 and I took it off the road in about 2018 as it was getting way too rusty and the creaking sound it made going over speed bumps was really starting to freak me out. I pulled it back out of storage at the end of 2021 to start on this rebuild and I wasted no time in dropping the old engine out. So this is a 2.3 litre slant 4 engine, it's basically half a V8. It's good for around 120 horsepower which might have been great in 1972 but it's hardly earth shattering performance by today's standards. Unfortunately, having not seen the car for a few years, I kind of forgotten how crusty it was. So I got my screwdriver out and had a bit of a poke around. And just in the engine bay alone, I found holes everywhere. So in the chassis legs, through the battery tray, through the wings, basically everywhere I looked, there was bits falling off. Now I found the best way to deal with difficult looking bits of a project is just to ignore them for as long as possible. So I pretended the rust wasn't there and I started off with figuring out how to mount the new engine. Luckily it turned out to be pretty simple to cut the original mounts off the Forenza subframe and fabricate my own to suit the LS. And this also gave me some much needed practice at TIG welding before I dove into my next project and started making myself some headers. And finally after cutting a really big hole in the firewall and the transmission tunnel I managed to get the engine and my shiny new headers to fit. There's plenty of room width wise, plenty for height, but there's not a lot of room in front to fit a radiator, so that's something we're going to have to figure out later on. Well, that's us all caught up for now. If you want to see any of that in more detail, you can go back and check out the older videos. It's time to man up and start dealing with the rusty shell. The plan is to start from the front and work my way to the back and fill in that big hole in the firewall along the way too. But first, I'm going to need to make sure this thing's solid to weld to. Everything on this upper section is full of holes. This is where the heater cowl is. It tends to be a trap for leaves and water. So it's not that surprising how crusty this bit looks. And the other side is just the same. So as the wings on this car are welded on, I started by very carefully cutting through the welds, but that quickly degenerated into just waggling the wing around until the welds broke off. And once that wing was carefully removed, I was left with this. Pretty damn crusty underneath. There are quite a few weld patches and quite a few big holes that you could fit your fist in. So I decided just to cut the entire inner wing off. And that's probably where things started to get a little out of hand. So now with the front end reduced to just a couple of chassis legs poking out into the middle of nowhere, probably time we had a repair montage.
One eternity later. So I've finished all the repairs to this upper part of the bulkhead. So I've had to repair in these corners here, all of these parts here, the front edges of these lips. You can see a few of my bugger welds in there. I've had to replace patches of this upper part. This whole section at the front. And pretty much the same the other side. So this section here and the bottom of this part, the bottom of here, the lip around here, a couple of pieces of this panel and this whole section here so before I move forward with reattaching the wings and the front panel I figure it's probably a good idea to reinforce those chassis legs just so this thing doesn't turn itself into a pretzel the first time I press the accelerator so in order to do that I'm going to follow a design that's in this old tuning vivas and forensas book so this has diagrams of some chassis reinforcement plates for the front legs and thankfully, Jody from Promet Custom and Restoration, he's reproduced his own version. So I'm going to cut these down and attach them in sections, just like they are in the book. Should make them a little bit easier to trim them so that I get a nice tight fit how I want. But first off, I'm going to give them a coat with Weld Free Primer and make some marks on there just so that I can get my welds evenly spaced. Because yeah, I'm a bit fussy like that. So on this inner pair of reinforcing plates, I've chosen just to stitch weld them around the outside. I could have welded through those holes that you see through the plate, but to be honest, I don't want to make this front section too stiff, as this is obviously, you know, part of the crumple zone. I will be having a roll cage inside the car, so I'm confident that the passenger compartment is going to be stronger than this front end, but still, don't want to go overboard here. So with both of those plates welded on, we're in a pretty good position to start reattaching the rest of the front end panels. But that's what I'll be doing in the next video. If you can't wait till then and you want to see things progressing a bit more real time, you can find me on Instagram under the same name. But for now, thanks for watching. Leave me a like, subscribe. I'll catch you again in the next one. Nah, nah. Shit!